time for a paint inspection. Uh, this car has been out for uh, three and a half to four months, so it's a little bit difficult to say what has been done uh, from the factory and what has uh, been done uh, in the hands of the owner. The car is covered in uh, minor to medium uh, scratches and holograms and moorings all over which make the paint look uh, a little bit dull. It doesn't pop as it's supposed to be. So there will be quite some, some paint correction done to this one. Every new or newer Tesla that I have done have a few of these marks. Uh, I'm not sure if they are wet sanding marks made at the factory that hasn't been uh, polished out correctly. Uh, because nowadays the, the Tesla delivery station does not, they claim they doesn't polish the cars. They say they only uh, wash them before uh, delivery. So this right here looks to me like uh, polish or compound residue. have no idea if it's from the, the factory or the dealer here in Sweden. The wheels are off and the car is up and most of you know I think that Teslas are uh, really fast because they are electric and the power goes uh, straight to the wheels. So they are fast cars and what this uh, red caliper tells us is that this particular one is a performance model. Um, and you don't buy a Tesla performance model unless you have a very heavy foot. Now this may have some side effects. If you take a look here at the front, uh, you see bugs, the leftover from bugs. And it's not because I've been uh, sloppy cleaning it, because it's been thoroughly cleaned and clayed. And uh, this is what happens when you drive really fast and hit bugs. They make uh, markings in your paint. This is another side effect uh, you can have. If you drive fast on like gravel roads, you get lots and lots of stone chips down here. And here in the back are more of those marks, uh, probably sanding marks. And here you can see, if you look closely in the middle, uh, they have been sanding out uh, some dust particle that's been in the paint when they sprayed it. Uh, and here is what they look like when, uh, when they forget to sand those out. You have a little one right there. That's what they sand out, but sometimes forget to, to polish the, the sanding marks. I will show you when I, when I remove this one. And on this door is a part that's been uh, wet sanded and also buffed out. And when I saw this, I, uh, I took my coating thickness tester and I found some pretty interesting readings on this car. But I will show you uh, when I get to, to this door.
I'm done cutting uh, the booth and since I'm going to start on uh, this panel next which is uh, very curved and later the door which is also very curved I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, pad sizes when I'm working on uh, curved areas I use the, the small machines and the tighter the curve the smaller the smaller pad you need to use. Uh, you might see some people use uh, the big, a bigger pad on all over the car, no matter where on the car they are correcting the paint. That is in my opinion not the best way to go and I will try to explain it to you. Now this is only rele relevant if you're using a dual action polisher, somewhat gear driven, but if you're using a rotary, uh, it's a completely different way of working, so this is only for dual action polishers. First, uh, a dual action polisher is the one that uses Randall orbital movement and also free spin, which means it oscillates and also rotates. But if you would press the, the pad too hard against the surface, uh, the rotation stops. You can say it stalls. This does not happen with a gear driven or a rotary. I mean, if you try to, to stop the rotation of a rotary polisher, you would seriously damage the paint and probably go straight through down to the metal. Uh, and these DA polishers, uh, usually the bigger machine, the bigger the orbit. Uh, to simplify things, let's just use the Rupes. Uh, Bigfoot system as a reference which is the one I use and they start off from the 21, the 15, the Duetto, Mini and uh, the Nano. So the 21 is 21 millimeter orbit, 15 is 15 and so on and also the pad sizes go from uh, big to small so this big one is made for uh, Rupes 21. This is the smallest one on the uh, Nano and this system is designed so that you're supposed to have the pad flat on the surface. Now sure, there are other uh, techniques where you can tilt and angle if you want, but it's supposed to be flat on the surface. Now if you had, your car was like a very flat dining table, easy, just go. But as you can see, a car is not flat anymore, it's curves basically everywhere. If you take this one here, it's not a good match. So this one is way too big. Next one is this. It's made for the Rupes uh, 15. Uh, same again. It's way too big. It's not uh, very efficient uh, to do this. And if you try to polish this, you hit the paint a little bit too hard when you go over the edge like this. And also what happens uh, both when you put too much pressure and when you come to a curb, you get stall. The, the rotation stops, which makes uh, your working less efficient. Um, next one, this is for uh, the Mini. It's also 
almost a little bit too big for this curve. So you should go even smaller. Uh, which brings us to uh, this ones, the two small ones, uh, which comes with uh, the Nano, which is a really insanely versatile machine. Uh, not only does it come in two pad sizes, you can change it here in the front, uh, two different orbital sizes, uh, either I think eight and three millimeters, and you can also make it uh, rotary. And uh, it's called the Nano, not the hybrid, but it comes with hybrid technology, which means you can either use it like this with a battery or with a cord. That's what the hybrid stands for, uh, not the machine's name. So uh, these, like I said, are the two small ones. Uh, this one is a little bit too big. Because, again, if you use a too big pad on a tight curve like this, uh, you might end up eating away a little bit too much on the sides and nothing where you're supposed to, to correct the paint. So you might go, need to go even to this, the smallest one, to get into to a tight, tight curve like this. And there's also even... <laughs> Uh, mini mini polishers which uses these uh, if you need a really in a really really tight spot Abrázame toda la noche no nos queda mucho tiempo más no quiero perder lo que queda Seguimos siempre la pasión Y confiamos solo en el amor yeah. No quiero perder lo que queda Y más y más allá A través de la gran oscuridad Hasta que me convierta en rayos Y más y más allá
the car is done, but before I show you the whole car, uh, I thought I'd show you this. How this came out, nice and clean and coated. And the wheels also coated inside and out. This one is also coated. And let me show you the inside of the car. Nice and clean. And the display shows us exactly where we are. The wheels are back on, so now the car is uh, completely finished. Um, I could have chased scratches a little bit further, but this car goes through uh, automatic washes from time to time. So we decided it, that this was uh, sufficient for this car.